Hi, friends. Welcome. We're starting a new series in the books of First and Second Samuel. I'm so excited. Today we're talking about primarily First Samuel 1, but we'll get a little bit into First Samuel 2 as well. Hi, friends. I'm Miss Nancy Ruth. And I'm Mr. Roger. We want to see kids living for Jesus. For an introduction to this book, make sure you check this playlist. <laughs> I'll link it up in the corner and it'll also be at the end of this video. So in uh, 1 Samuel, we start with a man named Elkanah, and he had two wives, Hannah and Peninnah. And um, Peninnah and Elkanah had lots of children. We don't know how many, um, and we don't know if there are boys and girls, but we know that she had children. We also know that Hannah didn't have any children, and this was a problem. Um, at the time, um, Elkanah and his family were going to go up to Shiloh to visit the, to visit the tabernacle of the Lord and worship God there. Now, Shiloh is mentioned several times in the Bible, so let's look at how to find Shiloh on a map so that you know where we're talking about. This is modern Israel. You may have seen this before. It's in the Middle East, um, close to Africa and close to Egypt. And when you're comparing modern Israel with ancient maps, what you do is you look for landmarks like rivers and lakes and mountains and things to um, help you figure out where things are because that, those don't change even though um, borders and boundaries do change. So when we're looking at modern Israel on top of ancient Israel, we match up the Jordan River and um, the Dead Sea and the Sea of Galilee. And this is what we get. So this is the map we're looking at today. Shiloh is in the tribe of Ephraim. Ephraim was one of the sons of Joseph, who was one of the 12 sons of Israel or Jacob. Um, Joseph's two sons ended up with two, two lotments of tribal lands, and then Levi ended up being the priest, and they didn't really have any allotted lands because they were the priests. So um, Ephraim, the land of Ephraim was typically right there, kind of in the middle of um, Israel and uh, the land of Israel. And Dan kind of moved. If you look at the top, um, the very top, the uh, let me make this bigger, the kind of like gray, uh, brownish color at the top is Dan. And then later in history, they moved down and they took over the coastal region around Ephraim. Dan is sometimes called the moving tribe for that reason. But Ephraim is um, actually where um, Elkanah and his family lived because that's the tribe, the family that he belonged to. And Shiloh is where the tabernacle was. That's here in Ephraim. Like I said, that's where the tabernacle was. So Jerusalem is north of Jerusalem and slightly to the west is Shiloh. That's where the tabernacle was. The temple was eventually built in Jerusalem, which was a slightly different place. Um, it's also, you can see where it is in relation to Jericho. Jericho is just north of the Dead Sea. They're um, close to the Jordan River and Shiloh is north west of that. <laughs> All right, so Elkanah and his family went up to worship at Shiloh. And the high priest at the time was Eli, and he had two sons, Hophni and Phinehas. And we'll talk more about those in the next video. Okay, so um, Elkanah, when he went up to offer sacrifices, he uh, had a portion for himself, and he, off he gave portions to his wife Peninnah and to each of her children for them to make sacrifices. But Hannah, he gave a double portion because he loved Hannah. Um, probably his favorite wife is kind of what that implies. All right, um, and... There's some jealousy there between Hannah and Peninnah because Hannah didn't have kids and Peninnah did. And so Peninnah used to tease her and make her feel bad. She says, and I don't, the scriptures don't say exactly what she says, but this is what I imagine Peninnah said to Hannah. I think God likes me better because I have kids and you don't. We know that was the heart of the argument. It was the amount of kids. And perhaps um, Peninnah said, what is wrong with you that you can't have kids? God must like me better because I can have kids and you can't. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> That's horrible stuff. <sighs> have you ever been bullied like Hannah was bullied by Penina? How did that make you feel? Let me know down in the comments. It's not a nice feeling, is it? And it's, <sighs> it's hard. And you might, if you've been bullied, you might have a sense of what Hannah felt as she was receiving all of this. And in fact, it says that when they went up to make their sacrifices um, and all this was going on between Hannah and Peninnah, Hannah was so upset with Peninnah's teasing and being mean to her that she was crying and she would not eat. She was so upset and wanted children so badly and Peninnah was not helping. <laughs> and it was to the point where her husband Elkanah said, Hannah, why are you not eating? Why are you so upset? Am I not more to you than, I think it said, seven sons? 
I'm looking for that here. Yeah, oh, 10. Do I not mean more to you than 10 sons? Am I your husband not more important to you than kids? I love you, Hannah. Why is that not enough for you? And she was just so upset. She would not be comforted. And what she did is she went and she prayed to the Lord and she poured out her heart to God like God tells us to do. He wants to hear what's in our heart, whether it's good or sad or mad or whatever it is. He wants to hear our heart. And that's what Hannah did. She went and she prayed to God and she poured out her heart before him. And she was crying and weeping and, and pouring out her frustration. She was so upset as she was praying. And she was saying, God, please give me a son. I want a child, a son so badly. Please, Father, give me a son. And if you bless me and give me a son, I promise that I will give him to you, Lord Jesus. And she was weeping and crying so much. And her mouth was moving, even though words were not coming out because she was so upset. That the high priest Eli saw her. And he saw her so upset and he thought she was drunk. He said, woman, why are you drinking? Put away your bottles and don't sin anymore. <laughs> and she, she looked up at him. She says, no, 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 you misunderstand. Your servant is, is so upset. She says, I'm a woman who is deeply troubled. I have not been drinking wine or beer. I was pouring out my soul to the Lord. Do not take your servant for a wicked woman. I have been praying here out of my grief and anguish, great anguish. And Eli blessed her and he said, go in peace and may the God of Israel grant you what you have asked of him. And she said, may your servant find favor in your eyes. She was comforted and the Lord used Eli to speak to her. And she went and she felt so much better. She even went and she ate a meal and that made her husband happy too. So then after they had finished their sacrifices at the tabernacle there in Shiloh, Elkanah and his family packed up and went home back to the, their um, hometown and areas where they lived. And wouldn't you know it? Hannah got pregnant and she had a little boy just like God had promised her. Oh, she was so excited and she named him Samuel, which means God has heard. God heard her pleas and her cries for a child and he gave Hannah Samuel. She was so excited. And so then the time came every year Elkanah and his family would go up and offer their sacrifices. And the time came for them to go and do that. And Elkanah says, honey, you ready to go, Hannah? And she said, you know what? I'm going to wait until this child is weaned. That means this child can um, just eat solid foods and not be reliant on other on a bottle and things like that. And so we're going to wait. But you go ahead and we'll be here. And so that's what they did. They sent off um, Elkanah and Peninnah and all her children to go do the sacrifices and they stayed home. And Samuel spent his early years there at home doing all the things that you do growing up in home with his family and all these things. We could just imagine what it would have been like growing up there with his family. And then the time came when he was old enough to just eat solid foods. And it was time for the annual sacrifice. So Elkanah, Hannah, Peninnah, and Samuel and all Peninnah's children went up to the tabernacle to offer sacrifices. And Eli was there and Hannah went up to Eli and she says, do you remember me? I'm the woman who cried and was praying so out of deep anguish. Do you remember? And I asked God to give me a son. This is the son God gave me. God is so good. He answered her prayer. And she wanted to rejoice with Eli. Look, God answered my prayer. And here's the child he promised me. And I want to um, give him to the Lord like I promised. And so, Eli, I want you to raise him here um, by the tabernacle so that he can serve the Lord all his days. And that's what he did. He served the Lord all his uh, served the Lord there in at Shiloh near in the tabernacle. And Hannah rejoiced and she gave uh, she prayed a prayer of thanksgiving. And I will link that up above. We pray through it together. And then uh, she left her son there to be raised and to walk with the Lord. So I have a question for you. Has God answered a prayer that you've given? Sometimes God answers prayers. Yes. And sometimes God answers prayers, no. Sometimes it's maybe. Sometimes it's wait, I should say. And sometimes God answers prayers in the way we didn't expect. But he always answers our prayers. What prayers has God answered for you lately? Let us know down in the comments. Let's praise the Lord together.
And let's look for God to answer our prayers, for He is so good. I'll see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe. We post memory verses in four translations, key passages, answers to Bible questions, and more. Check out our store and freebies at parentroadmin.com. We love you, friends. See you next time.